Okay, YouTube, so Eduardo over at uh, Monster Tutorials went ahead and dropped a uh, burlap mask challenge on us. Uh, anybody can take it. It could be either a full mask or a uh, half mask. Uh, it could be a prop, but you got to use burlap as your main component, which we have here. Um, you can use anything you want. It's an open challenge to everybody. You just got to take three pictures, one of the beginning, uh, your progress, your materials, your progress, and then your, uh, your end picture of what your final mask turned out to be. So I kind of figured that uh, everybody's going to zig and do probably, you know, bag masks. I'm going to zag and I'm going to do something like this. I'm hoping for like maybe an African witch doctor mask or something like that. Maybe a little uh, skull up here, some, uh, you know, some burlap, and I'm going to do a wire frame for it and stuff. So that's kind of a rough idea what I'm shooting for. So I uh, had to go do a little materials run. So I went over to the Dollar Days. I got these from last year, the little uh, hula grass skirts, a little raffia grass. Uh, we got our burlap. I got one of them little orange kneeling pads for being in the yard. I got some palm leaves from Hobby Lobby. I got some dollar store bones from last year. I got some spare burlap. I got some Aquanet. Maybe this will help uh, firm up this uh, burlap. I don't know. Got some of that. I got some uh, from Menards. I got some rubber tape, which is almost like a backer rod, but it's softer. It's got a hole in the middle so I can run this wire on my wire frame. I got some feathers from Hobby Lobby. I got some pipe cleaners from uh, Dollar Days in case you need them. Black feathers, more pipe cleaners. I got a mop. Don't know why. Grab it. What the hell? Never know what I'm going to use. I got some more backer rod in case we need it. I got some ace bandages. Maybe we'll need those. I don't know. Two of those. I got some random yarn. I got some twine. I got some ping pong balls. I got a bunch of crap basically from the Dollar Days and leftovers. And that's what we're going to build our mask out of. So like I said, we're going for the uh, kind of a witch doctor, big witch doctor mask. So I'm going to go ahead and start with eighth inch rod. And I'm going to try and bulk out a uh, wire frame to uh, get the kind of the bulk and the shape of my mask in. So let's do that now. Okay, YouTubes. So I got this uh, eighth inch steel rod from Menards. It's like two or three bucks a suction. It's got a little uh, coating on it, which is okay, but uh, just so it doesn't slip out of my hands or anything, I'm gonna go ahead and scuff it off a little bit, just clean it up. So we've got our eighth inch rod. I'm gonna use this brand new paint can, and I'm gonna try and make this uh, top arch and just bend it right over the old paint can so I get a consistent bend. And this stuff bends real easy by hand. So, something like that. And then I gotta make these little bends. So can I bend out again? See, hand form that, make it a little taller. All right, that's cool. We're gonna make this a big mask. Uh, like I said, everybody zigs. I wanna zag, do the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go about here, try and make that bend. All right. All right, this stuff ain't too bad. Okay, so we're getting our bends in. We just gotta bend this down a little bit. Right around that paint can, so that's close. And then I'll probably go ahead and bend the ends in. And then we gotta make our sides. I'm gonna straighten it out a little bit. All right, all right, that's a start. I'm gonna go ahead and bend these ends in and try and get some of that. And we'll take another piece and line up our ends over here. Okay, YouTubes. I got the top hoop uh, basically bent. I want to start working on this bottom and do the little jaw area. So I got another piece of steel. I'm about right in the middle. So I'm going to say his mouth's going to be about this wide or so. So I'm just going to go ahead and bend down. Try and just make it a square. And then again, yeah, I kind of like the soft bend. We don't necessarily need a hard bend. So that'll be the bottom of the jaw right here behind the mouth. And then we want to come up and roll into the sides. So let's give them kind of a big jaw. Let's say something like that. Kick that out that way. Kick this out this way. And this eighth inch rod is pretty sturdy. I'm way lower on this side. So I'll just go ahead and bend that up. All right. So that's a little better. I'm still lower, okay. All right, so that'll be our mouth. So we're getting there, something like that. Let's uh, bend our sides up. 
And again, you could probably do this with coat hangers or thinner wire. I just want something sturdy so that uh, as this thing's sitting around for a couple of years, it doesn't get all bent up all crazy. All right, so I'm gonna tweak those guys. This is gonna be our outside hoop. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some clamps on this thing. Yeah, figures. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this thing up where I want it. I'm gonna form the mouth and get that hanging on there. And uh, I'll probably throw a couple of tack welds on this thing so it's nice and sturdy. But I gotta leave one end open so we can slide the uh, weather stripping around it. Okay, YouTubes, so I got my little welder set up. I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld here. I'm gonna leave this side open because I've got this uh, rubber tape bull crap that I wanna slip over the end. It's got a little hole in there. And I'll use that to wrap our uh, burlap on and to tie off with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, raffia grass. So I'm gonna tack these ends. I'm gonna leave it open and I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple of pieces and I'm gonna build a little mouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the mouth I'll probably bend the little ends around and make a little mouth that swings open and stuff. So I'm going to fab up this whole little frame, uh, tack weld it where I want it, get it wrapped up. And when I come back, we're going to start, I'll show you what it looks like and we'll start putting some burlap on this thing. So let's get tacking. Okay, YouTubes, I got the armature done. I went ahead and welded everything up. I've got some uh, inch and one eighth backer rod on some of the uh, little head strap I made. I went ahead and took a little uh, eye hook. You see that? Went ahead and took a little eye hook and I welded that to the mouth so the mouth kind of swings open. So we got a working mouth. Um, basically it's pretty simple. I got everything kind of cleaned up. I made just a little head strap that folds behind so that way if I want to store it or hang it on the wall, it's not sticking out bulky. So it kind of fits on my head. I got the bottom part resting on my chin. I should hopefully be able to see through the uh, the nose area through the burlap, I'm hoping. So I got a big old honking mask on my head. Let's start skinning this bad boy. Okay, YouTubes. So I got us a pretty pink drop cloth down that'll keep the uh, glue from sticking everywhere. I went ahead and cut a big old slab of uh, fabric to kind of stretch over this guy and make sure I had enough. Uh, but before I go plastering this on, I want to go ahead and glue all the edges and stuff up. Uh, I want to try something. I've got a little five below uh, skeleton mask I got last year. I got a bunch of them, they were a dollar a piece. It's nice and pretty sturdy. So I thought, man, I wonder if I could make a separate skull up here over the eyes and have a skull on top of uh, the eye sockets and then the nose. So I'm gonna try and glue this up. We'll just use some straight Super 77, hose it down. All right, we'll let that guy sit. And then I'm going to hose the back of the fabric down, and then I'll stick it on there, and I'll see if this thing won't actually stick. Oh, I got a piece of burlap on there already. There we go. All right, and that's already getting tacky. So we got to be close to the top. So I need to be about, eh, maybe five inches down or so. Oh, no. Ooh, it's already sticking. Man, that's good stuff, man. I love Super 77. Okay, so... Make this our top, which means we want our skull to sit right about here, so right there. Alright, I'm going to hose that down. Alright, stay in the middle. Let's see if I can't get this thing to stick on there. Ooh, it's already tacky. Alright, I'm just going to mash this down in there. Let's see. It's a little higher. Okay. All right, let's see if I can't just squeeze them eye sockets on there. Ooh, we're going right to the uh, little pink uh, thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that'd be a cool effect. I might cut the teeth out so they'll show. So I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this. And then uh, when we come back, I wanna start gluing all this, this uh, fabric down to the frame the same way. Okay, YouTubes, so the Super 77 worked good. I used a little bit of Aquanet, sprayed it down. I've been taking this little, eh, it's like a little pick, sculpting tool, whatever, and just picking up some of these little strands, busting some of them, moving it around, just kind of making it look uh, more beat up. I put some wrinkles in there by just folding down. 
So I think I'm pretty happy with it. I can always pick it up towards the end, but I want to go ahead and get this thing glued up at least the top half and get this thing centered. So my plan is, so we got so far, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right around here for the skull. So I think I'll do something like so. And then I'll just super 77 the edges, let that sit up. And then we got to do the same to the fabric. So I'm going to glue these uh, guys up. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll lay the fabric over. Just enough to get it tacky. And I don't want to do the whole mask yet. I just want to kind of concentrate on the top half and get that tight where I want it because the eyes will be here. And then I'll worry about the bottom part after I get this guy glued on. So let's get this guy right around here. All right, I want to kind of stretch this. Stick into the paper again, the plastic. I got to, I'll put some more wrinkles in if I need to. There's our edge. All right. So we're getting there. Pick this up. This will be our bridge of our nose. All right. Now, if I have to, I can always run a uh, piece of uh, twine or something behind to stick this down to the, uh, the wire that's behind at the armature. So, so far, that's what we got. I'm going to leave this long for now. This stuff without picking the plastic up. All right, so that's what we're looking like. I'm going to leave this fringe long for now, and I'm going to move on and try and get the rest of this face done down to where the jaw's at, and I'll wrap the jaw separately. Okay, YouTubes, I got everything basically wrapped. I overlapped a little about over an inch on the back all the way around, glued it down. Uh, pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this bottom jaw now. I've got one more slab of excess that I cut off. So I'm gonna wrap the bottom of the jaw. I'll probably go something like this. Then come up the back and finish off this lower jaw. Okay, YouTubes, we're back. The uh, lower jaw is all wrapped. I'm happy with it. I wanna move on. Uh, I was gonna do teeth out of foam. You know, these little kneeling mats that you buy at the dollar store for uh, gardening. Uh, I was going to make some sharp jag ones, but I thought, you know, I've got these other ones I made last year. These are just polymer teeth that I made out of clay and baked in the oven and threw a quick paint job on. I've got a bunch of them that are flat and big I made for my Cyclops, so I've got plenty. I think I'm going to go ahead and use these teeth in here. I think they'll look really cool, uh, pretty gnarly. So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue teeth in. I've got some little backer boards cut for behind because I don't want to just glue them to fabric because it might, you know, get tipped out of there and knocked out. I found a little brass ring I had, so I think we'll do a little nose ring on this guy. Uh, and then the last thing I want to do before I don't go too crazy is I want to get paint done. So with the same thing, instead of making teeth out of this little kneeling mat from the dollar store, I'm going to cut some eyeballs. I'm going to shave off this uh, stupid pattern. I hate when people use this stuff and they leave the waffle pattern on it. It drives me freaking nuts. So I'm going to use this as a template. And I'm going to cut two of them and these will be our eyeballs uh, for our mask. So might as well see if I can get some teeth in this thing. Uh, heat gun, glue gun should be heated up. There we go. Now I want to put a couple of gnarly rows of teeth in there. If I overlap them, make them jagged looking, that's cool too. And this stuff, like, it's pulling right through that burlap. So that's freaking awesome. Let's see, you can do another smaller one for the bottom. Get a nice big dab on there. Yeah, check that out. Okay, YouTubes, I got the eyes in. I just went ahead and cut up this little kneeling pad from the dollar store. I went ahead and put some razor blade slashes in it and heat gunned it. I got a five minute epoxy, a ping pong ball behind it I just cut in half for lenses. I glued the teeth in, I put a little nose ring in. I want to get some paint on this guy. And I did go ahead and I sanded the uh, teeth back white because I want them to be a little bit lighter than what they are now. So it's time for paint. I think I want to get some kind of paint scheme on this guy. So I've got this uh, Color Masters Design Burgundy. I want to kind of do the whole outside edge in the burgundy color. I want to use a mute, muted tone. I don't want to use bright uh, Scooby-Doo color. So I just want to kind of dust this whole edge all the way around. And if I don't like it or it gets too dark, I can go back. So I want to darken this up a little bit with the glossy wood tone. But I just want to do a nice little contrasting border around this thing. All 
that. I can always knock it down with another color. Okay, YouTube, go back and hit the second color. So a summer squash. Just gonna dust it on there. this dry and I'll try and find like a second color to put on there. And YouTube's. I got a nice uh, satin rustic orange. I figure we'll stay with that fire theme. Dust on another little color. Some bright orange. A little under the eyes. Alright. Start throwing some other details on this guy. Okay, YouTubes. So I did go ahead and add some little stripes over the eyes. I think I'm um, pretty well blocked out. I'm kind of happy with that. I want to get some uh, details going on this thing. I did go ahead and take the wood, glossy wood tone and I stained the uh, raccoon skull. I'm going to go ahead and mount that up there. But first, before I do that, so I can flip this thing over, I've got these uh, dollar store uh, raffia graph skirts that you get for the springtime. They're like a dollar a piece. When you stretch them out, they look like this. So they got a little band across the top with all the little strands tied to them. I want to do this around the perimeter of the mask. Uh, I've got some feathers for the top of the mask that I also got from Hobby Lobby. Don't know where those are at right now, but the glue gun's heating up. So while I can still flip the mask on its back, I'm going to get this raffia grass lined up and ready to go. So I'm going to hot glue it to the back and go all the way around this perimeter. So let's lay down a nice big fat bead of glue. And this will help hold the uh, fabric to itself too, so that'll help. And I may go back and lace this up, I don't know. So I'm going to tuck that in there before this glue dries. Lay it right in there. Oh yeah, it's already sticking nice. Okay. Okay, YouTube, so our mask grows yet again. I got all the little raffia grass hot glued on there. Um, this thing is getting monstrous big. I think my last detail, although I'll probably do a few more, I've got a bunch of feathers from Hobby Lobby. I thought I might add to the top of the headdress, so maybe I'll alternate them black and red. I'll put a little cut in there, I'll slide them in, I'll hot glue them from the back. So maybe I'll go all the way around the top with uh, black and red feathers. I don't know. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna mess with it. I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and throw all the details I want on this thing. I've got a little bag of uh, dollar store bones. I might throw some bones on this thing. I'm gonna pimp the rest of this thing out, spend some time detailing out. When we come back, this thing's gonna be done, man. We're gonna take a look at this thing and uh, I'll put it on and show you guys how big this thing is. Okay, YouTube, we're done, man. This guy is finished. I went ahead and added my last little bits. I used some old junk beads that I had from uh, other builds, some of the orange yarn. This is the uh, shredded uh, leather cord from the uh, zombie uh, necklace. I uh, went ahead and added some shells. I got a couple of bags of shells from the dollar store. So I put some shells in the skull of the eye. A couple up here. Uh, the raccoon skull. Painted him up a little bit. Basically just distressed. I put a little uh, shell in the, uh, in his chin area. I put a bead on his nose ring. I got some raccoon uh, rib, rib bones right here. Punched with the mask. Did my little final detailing paint and stuff. Man, I'm really happy with it. It's a huge monster headdress. Uh, and I got one last little trick for you guys. Most of this stuff is black light paint, so I'll give you a close up, and then we're gonna kill the lights and see this thing in black light. Okay, YouTubes, black lights are on. I did go ahead and add some LED lights on the eye sockets just for the hell of it. So not only is it black light, I've got LED lights on the eyes. Check them out. Okay, YouTubes, this is my official entry in the Monster Tutorials Burlap Mask Challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys are going to enter the contest. Um, it's been a couple of years since Eduardo has done one, so I want to thank Ed personally for hosting it. Uh, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to see what everybody else comes up with. I know the trio's in. They're making masks. So, man, hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror, Vic over at Monster Misfits, and Dave at the Weird Kid Show channel, guys. It's Halloween year long for us obviously, as you can tell. So, until I see you guys again, man, keep it evil. Booga booga, booga booga. Yep, my junk fell out.